Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving shop, and uh, I got great feedback on the black on black and white on white painting videos that I just put together. Sounds like those are going to be helpful to people, and that's that's my goal. So thanks for that feedback. And uh, I'm going to start a new carving project. This is going to be a gadwall drake, one of my favorite birds. Um, very unique shapes, and in this video I'm going to do something, or this video series, a little bit different. I'm not going to grind through all of the how to, how to bandsaw out a bird, how to rough shape a bird, things like that. I'm just going to focus on the things that are unique about the gadwall and the shaping of the head in particular. We'll focus quite a bit of time and attention on that. And then maybe some of the details on the body that are different from other uh, decoys. But I don't want to just repeat material that you've already seen. And if you haven't, um, if, if you're new and you're just starting out with this video, please refer back to like carving a, a drake mallard or a hen mallard. Those uh, videos take you from beginning to end, starting with band sawing out the tupelo blocks uh, to get ready to go. But I've got my patterns made, I've got my reference ready, I've got my head and body cut out, and now we'll move into shaping the head. I know you hear me say this a lot, but if you are getting value out of the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I think 60% of the people that are watching are not subscribing. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. And if you hit that button, that helps me build the channel a little bit, helps me out. It'll also give you notification of new content as I continue to add to the channel. If you want that, if you don't want to be bothered with that, you can opt out of emails that say, hey, Tom just posted a new video. So let's get started on the uh, Gabal Drake, and we'll focus again on the head to begin with. Thanks. Welcome back. Well, let's start by doing some planning, and uh, I want to look at this study bill. This, I think, is a Bob Miller study bill I got a long time ago. Um, people have been asking me where to get study bills. I think you can buy them at James Company uh, is one source. But I wanted to just look at a few things on the uh, Gadwall bill. It's a smaller bill overall than say a mallard bill. It's uh, relatively narrow. The nostril and, uh, and enclosures are pretty close to the face, to the uh, cheeks here. There's a little bit of an up and down shape to the upper mandible and then curled up in the corner. The V-notch is pretty shallow, so there's not much of a return, or I call it a return. It doesn't go back into the face. That's kind of unique to the, the Gadwall bill. You're coming from the corner of the mouth and almost straight up here. So just some details to take a look at. And then I've made a pattern from this study bill. And now we'll go to the the head and I've laid the pattern out on the decoy head top and bottom and now let's do a little bit of layout work those of you that have been watching my channel kind of know the routine here I'm using the dividers to transfer this dimension from the tip of the bill to the where the bill meets the cheek on both sides. Just draw a little arc there. Use a pencil so I can see where that is. And then I'm going to just strike a line here and carry that across. And I, I just use the bandsaw marks as my guide to keep things nice and square. Do the other side as well. Carry that underneath, again following the bandsaw 
marks that give me a nice straight line guide. So that'll be our first cutout with coping saw and then we're going to come from the bill back in this fashion. Uh, I am going to drill the eye hole. I haven't done that on this side. I need to get that done. You can see I made this head a little higher than this older pattern that I'm using, but I like this pattern. So I'll drill those eye holes and then we'll um, continue laying out the head. Get the back and the back of the head of a gadwall gets pretty narrow and the crown gets pretty narrow, especially in an upright position or alert position like this one is. So I've got my guidelines on there and then I like to just sketch as a reminder to myself a cheek line here, which I'm just ballparking this kind of falls in that goes through the eye right to the base of the bill and then around the corner here. And this neck will be undercut there. And I want to give some vertical guidelines here so I don't cut away the cheek. We want to leave this intact. So I just like to sketch those on both sides. They kind of line up good enough. Okay, now we'll go to the coping saw. By the way, I did sketch the neck in on the center line down below just to keep that intact so I don't uh, take material out of the neck as I'm doing this cutting and carving. So I'm going to use the coping saw. I'm going to swing this around so we can see better. Use the coping saw to cut around the outline of the bill. And make sure I'm nice and square. And if anything, I'm going on the outside of these marks because once I sand the bill, it's going to narrow things up a little bit. So I want to have material to work with there. I'm getting down to here. I'm going to stop. This is just the way I do it, folks. Doesn't mean it's the right way, but I like to define where this cheek where the bill meets the cheek and very cautiously so I don't gouge the bill, cut that piece out. Before I go to then taking off the rest of this, this kind of becomes a sacred line that I want to keep intact. That sets the length of the bill and make sure the proportions are correct and the way it interfaces the cheek. Doing the same thing over here. You can probably see this cut a little better than that previous one. I'm just following my guideline, slowing down when you get to the, ch the cheek so we don't gouge it. Take that out. This is that line I was talking about. Now I'm going to take slices off the head. You can do this with a bandsaw. And sometimes I do, depending on the shape of the head and how much work is involved. But today I'm just going to use my coping saw. Do the same thing over here. Again, can probably see this better. And I use this guideline. I'm going to switch that up a bit so I'm more flat there. Use this as a gu exit guideline. So as I'm sawing, I'm kind of targeting coming out at that location. 
on the side of the head so I know how far to cut back. And this is not perfect, but it's close. I'm gonna do the same thing with these cuts and then we'll start shaping up the head. Just a quick look at after those cuts where we stand. Let's give you a look at the angle back there. Now I'm gonna re-pencil in my cheek lines to kind of keep them in in front of me. And next we'll work on defining where this notch comes down. You can see the shape of the gadwall's head. There's quite a bit of forehead to a gadwall. The bill is smaller and it tends to be low on the face like this. Eye up here. Just some details. But let's get this notch located. Using my dividers and my study bill and getting a dimension from the tip of the nail to the tip of the V notch here and transfer that dimension to my wood and just leave a little mark there. And then I'm using my rule here to just get a feel for how far these notches or how wide this notch is. And it looks like it's three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to use the rule to split that up and put three-eighths dimension on here and that is very much a v-shape on the gad wall and so I want to line that up with this study bill a little bit of a a curve shape to this so I'm going to want to duplicate that as we go into the detail carving. Before I get my respirator on and I fire up the blower, I'm, I'm using this little uh, 1 8 inch, roughly, diameter ruby bit. And I'm gonna go in and duplicate that shape and take this material out on both sides and form that notch shape. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the video as we go through this, just so you know, this is two times speed. Now I'm just using that the side of that bit to remove material on both sides of the notch and leave the notch raised. And I'm trying to uh, create that shape that we saw in the study bill on the notch. This doesn't go down very far on a gad wall. So I'm penciling that in, it gives me a better view. Now you can see that shape that I've ground in there. Checking my references, uh, the crown is about an inch and a half. I mentioned on a gad wall, uh, I don't want this to be alert, scared looking, and they can really tighten up their, uh, the crown and the crest quite a bit. So I'm kind of hitting an intermediate value here at an inch and a half, and I've sketched that in here. And so now we're gonna go in and grind material out of here, kind of form the cheek and taper in the crest back here and remove this material from above and tie that in and we'll start to round the bill. Okay, I'm gonna use this three quarter inch diameter cylindrical burr with the round nose on it. And this video is two times speed, so I'm not grinding this fast, take your time. But basically, I'm gonna remove material on both sides of the crown to hit that guideline that we put in place above. And then also begin to round the bill and blend that into the uh, the face. As you can see, I'm going right through that eye area and just trying to hit that guideline above. And I'm beginning to form the cheek on the bird as I do this. 
The gadwall has pretty prominent cheeks, and this crest gets pretty narrow near the back of the head. So I'm taking quite a bit of material off near the, the rear there. Okay, so I'm getting close to that guideline. And now I'm going to flip the head around and round the cheek. Again, kind of using the eye as a guideline for location. And just begin rounding that and not removing too much material from the cheek itself because we want to leave that width on the head. Now I want to undercut this area and I pointed to the guideline on the neck that we drew in there. So it's hard to see here, but we'll have better views in a second. There you can see I'm just taking material off down to that rounded neck area. So the cheek is a little undercut. The neck is more narrow than the head at the cheeks. And then I'm blending that up into the cheek. So we have kind of that characteristic hourglass shape from the front. Just continuing to work that. And then I may get a smaller bit to work the area under the neck. Because it's pretty tight under there, but I will remove a little material here. I like to do as much as I can with this uh, saber tooth fine burr. So I'll duplicate that same work on this opposite side and then come back. Stop grinding for a minute just to give you a, a quick look at the way this is shaping up. You can see I've carved this fairly narrow back here and a pretty well-defined cheek line. This will all be part of that nice, rich, dark brown crest when we're done. Next, I want to start defining where the bill comes in here and use my reference. And uh, then we want to define how far this comes back to meet up here. And we'll get a reference dimension with my pattern. And I'm defining how far back this comes in the face from the tip of the bill on both sides. And keep in mind this is up off the bottom a little ways, so I've drawn it in that way. And this comes around the corner and kind of straight up to that area, so we're going to want to remove this material in here on both sides. Bring the bill down, pull it back to here, take material out of here. Okay, this is two times speed again, and I'm just using that little um, ruby bit to remove material. Basically, we want to maintain the width of the bill as it goes back into the cheek and face in that lower area. So same thing on this side, just carrying that bill straight back and then using the, uh, the bit to define where the bill goes into the notch there. Now I'm going to mark out where the uh, rictus is, the corner of the upper and lower mandibles. But I'm changing to this bit, which is kind of a bullet nose bit, to round that area and blend it back. So we can't leave a, a hard shelf there, so this is just used to blend. And then this is a good uh, ruby bit to blend things in general because of that nice round in shape. So I'm cleaning up the bill and defining that uh, as it goes up into the notch area and then rounding the, the upper mandible a little bit here. Now I'm going to round that area around the notch. And this is just rough shaping at this point, but trying to take material down to where 
it's going to make sense when we go to the details. All right, I've got that corner defined and positioned. Now I'm going back to my study bill, what we talked about earlier. This goes down from the corner. It comes back up a little bit and then heads back down. And that's very characteristic of a, a gadwall drake. And it's something that I want to put in my carvings. You could choose if you want to just go straight there, but I like to try to get as accurate as I can. So I'm going to dip down. I'm going to come back up just a little and then head back down so that there's a kind of a lobe out here and a little bit of an upturn here. So I'll pencil that in on both sides, down, a little bit of an upturn, and then going out to this, I'm calling it a lobe. I don't have all the anatomy terms down, Pat, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to use my knife. Let me try to get a better camera angle. Anytime I use my knife, I like it to be on a firm surface and not freehand. That's just me, but they're really sharp. So I'm putting a first cut in right there, and my hands are right in the way. I see that now. To give me that down angle and then I'm going to follow this pencil mark and I'm going to score that multiple times so I'm not putting too much pressure on the blade that's going to make me slip or push and gouge too much of the lower mandible. Okay. Now I'm going to go in from this angle, go back to where they join up here, and do kind of an angle cut down. And then go underneath, find that angle cut, and again score multiple times. until this material comes free. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm happy with that cut and we'll clean that up a bit. But you can see the sh shape that I was talking about there. Do that on the other side. Then we can do a little more detailing down here. Okay, I'm speeding the video up. This is this little uh, kind of pyramid shaped ruby bit and it's really nice for getting in these tight areas. I'm just cleaning up the lower mandible there where we did the knife work and also that area right around the corner where the upper and lower mandible meet. and then doing a little bit of rounding as well. Now I want to work to define this lower mandible as it meets the face down below. So I'm going to use the knife and carefully cut back into the face there and take out that little piece of a triangle and that'll begin to form that V under the chin. I'm going to do that on this side as well. Normally I would slow the video down during knife work. I'm just not going to do that this time, but just know this is two times speed. So you want to work slower than this to work safely. Now I'm just using that ruby bit to clean things up in general. And get under the chin air and throat area there where the, uh, the larger saber burr wouldn't fit in that area. And now I'm just working to define where that lower mandible meets the face and put a little bit of a groove down there. It's just a subtle thing, but uh, I think it helps define that area and it'll cast a little bit of a shadow. 
Let's see if we can see that here. Yeah. Same thing on this side. And we don't want any harsh edges, so I'm just using that to clean things up. That's looking pretty good. All right, now I've got my calipers and I've got a distance set on for the distance between the eyes. And uh, the calipers won't fit back to the eye holes. So we're gonna have to go in on either side and gouge out a little material to create a little bit of a indentation that the eyes will go into so that they're set at the proper distance from each other from the front. This is something a lot of people struggle with. Too wide, too narrow, uh, really makes a difference, especially from the front view. So we'll remove some material here until I can get my calipers to fit where I want them to be. I don't have to take out much because the crown is pretty narrow up here. So we'll go two times speed here again. I'm using this bullet shaped ruby bit and just creating a groove along through the eye hole and then rounding that into the cheek and up into the crown as well. So we'll work on this until we've created the, uh, a deep enough groove that we can get the calipers in from the front. So I'll do both sides and I don't have to go very deep on this bird. As I said before, uh, this crown is relatively narrow, so there's not a big deep groove that we need to create here to get to the proper depth. Checking, that looks good. So that didn't take long at all. Now I'll just use the bit to kind of clean things up and make sure we have good blends up and down away from that eye groove so it doesn't cast any harsh shadows. Now we can work on the crown and I'm going to use this three quarter inch round nose saber tooth burr and just round the crown area on both sides. We want to leave that center line intact so we don't lose the profile of the bird. If we grind that away, we've changed the pattern that we created. And I want this to be relatively round uh, so he doesn't have a blockhead, square head look from the front. Just a nice soft round profile. And then I'm using that to round that crest and narrow it at the back a little bit. Again, keeping that center line intact so we don't lose the pattern. And then I'm rounding in the opposite direction up from the eye, up into the crown. And be careful we don't grind too much off here so that you lose the thickness of the crown that we set to begin with. So that's looking pretty good. Give you a quick look at this from the front. You can see the hourglass shape and nice round. I've got to remove some material from the cheek area. The face is pretty fat right now, but we'll do that in the details. Okay, we've got things rough shaped. Now I'm going to use 150 grit on my sanding drum and just smooth everything up in preparation for adding more details. I'll just speed this video up and show you a little bit of this uh, rough sanding. I use this, it's like half inch diameter, 150 grit cushion drum on the Fordham. And uh, just removing all of the hard edges and grinding lines and getting things rough sanded. And then I'll finish up with some hand sanding. Just finish the roughing out by doing a little hand sanding. I think this is uh, this is 120 grit. Just taking off the bumps, smoothing things out, and getting rid of any tool marks or grinding marks so that we don't have to deal with those 
when we're doing the details. So I'll finish sanding this and then next time we'll be ready to uh, do some build details. I also want to do a little bit of crest feather detail, just some bumps and maybe get the eyes put in next time as well. All right, that'll finish up session one of carving a Drake gab wall. We've got the head nicely shaped, roughed out, and ready for details next time. Hey, I just want to thank those of you that have subscribed, and I just want to thank everybody in general for the support and encouragement of this carving channel. I've gotten notes from people all over the country and all over the world, which is really encouraging as well. Uh, about carving decoys, people starting for the first time, people picking it up that had given it up. And uh, that's the goal of this channel is I want to encourage people to give this a try because I love it and I think you would too. Hunting season is coming up. I know not all of you hunt and I get that, but I do when I get the chance and I'm looking forward to a little cooler weather in the carving shop and maybe getting out in the blind. Until next time, see you later. Tom Christie.